G'day. Hello there. I'm Ozzy Robbo. I'm English Gent. And welcome back to another episode of What Has Darren Been Buying? So this week it's all Disney, it's pretty much all Walt Disney World and Disneyland themed. And one of the things will be whatever's in this strange luminous orange box <laughs> that Rob knows nothing about. <laughs> so, see you shortly. So those of us who know our vlogs uh, during lockdown has been very heavily what have I been buying, what horrible surprises have I got for Rob. Um, and one of the things we, we kind of never, we saw but we never kind of got into when we were in the parks, uh, before New Emos was a thing, uh, the big trend was wishables and this is one such wishable. So these were park only sold. Um, and they were essentially icons of Disney, so whether it be characters, films, etc., all on a particular theme. So they do blind bags, and then they usually sell one like this, where it's like you can you know what you're getting, it's off the rack. And we completely missed it. So um, I managed to see a few bargains on eBay and um, various other places, and I thought I'll actually try getting some because some of them are quite cute. Um, <laughs> what would you, how would you describe that? I don't understand what it is. It's what kind it's of for? It's kind of kawaii. It's Disney's answer to kawaii. So it's all very cutesy, emoji styled, OTT. Um, for kids? Or souvenirs? Souvenirs. <laughs> um, but yeah, they're very collectible. They're kind of like the Beanie Baby craze. And they still sell now. I think they've just released Guardians of the Galaxy, um, which have been quite sought after. So they haven't stopped doing them because of new emos. Um, I think it's just another branch to their tree, really. That one was actually from the Transport series, and it's actually one of the few things I would have been interested in in regards of a sort of lovely, cuddly toy version of something which is very hard and metal, if that makes sense. Um, so, we've got two from that series which are blind bagged. You've got on the back, so you can get one of four things. You've got monorail, steamboat, the trolley cart, Oh, it's a locomotive en engine, so it's all things you see around Disneyland and uh, Disney World. Um, so I thought I'd get a couple of these. Uh, they, I really, really want to get the steamboat um, because that's, yeah, the Mark Twain riverboat one, because that is really cute. I've seen that, what it looks like. So should we open them? We've got one each. Right, Let's see what we've got. Right, show your work. <laughs> so you've got the locomotive. Well, you shouldn't get um, repeats. Yeah, the problem with blind bags is you spend a lot of money on stuff you might already have. And I'm noticing also, same as new emos, we've got the long ass, uh, not receipt, the uh, the tag uh, with all the terms. So I have to cut those out carefully. So I've got the trolley cart, which is actually really cool. And as you know, I really, really enjoy going on the trolley cart myself. Uh, whenever on there and they've got the voiceover. I have to recite with it. <laughs> Even if I don't know what well, Spanish. Word for word. No, not word for word. <laughs> I will learn it though. Um, and then you've got the locomotive, which is at both parks. Kind of sticking to icons. Um, what does everybody think about when they have food at Disney, especially for say, staying on resort? It's a Mickey waffle. So you've got Mickey waffle, Two sides. This is kind of like an emoji one for sure, because it's got like two different faces on both sides. Um, so two faces on each side. No, one face on each side, two different faces. <laughs> I'm having a stroke. Um, so you, as you can see, it's got even got a little knob of butter in the top. So this is one you can buy just straight off the rack. I mean, this is cute. This is more cute than the other ones, I've got to say. Um, yeah. What do you do with it though? Um, you keep them all together in a lovely soft ball. So we've got one from that series. That, that series is the Wishables uh, Parks Food Series 2. So with that one, you can get one of the following. So you've got churros, you've got turkey leg, you've got uh, popcorn, and you've got cotton candy. And they're all done in, again, the kawaii kind of style. Do you want to open that one? Nothing would make me happier. What do you think it is? Uh, I want it to be churros because they're the ones that are really cute, but uh, yeah. Life's full of disappointments. 
Oh no, my least favorite. That's, that's my least favorite thing to eat in the park as well. How would you know you haven't had one? I know that's why, because I don't want a turkey leg. I don't want a giant ass turkey leg to walk around the park. Well, you don't actually like turkey, do you? You only no, take it Christmas, exactly. which is weird. <laughs> but again, let's have a look. So yeah, in this one, we've got the turkey leg and these are really soft, like really, really soft. Um, quite nicely thought out though. I like the way it's kind of got the winking kawaii vibe going on and the bone at one end, different. Uh, but yeah, that's my least favorite item I'd ever want to eat in Disney, walking around with a greasy turkey leg. I'd like to eat a little bit of a turkey leg. I don't want to eat a whole turkey leg because they look very big. They look enormous, they actually. They look huge, yeah. Whenever you see photos on vloggers. I can just remind, I can just imagine the amount of stomach acid that's going to come up <laughs> after having a full one of those. Yeah, let's go on an attraction. Yay! <laughs> um, something we've never been to. We've been to the Flower and Garden Festival and we've been to the Food and Wine Festival and we've been there around Christmas as well where that changes into more Christmassy food. But we've never been to the Festival of the Arts. For me personally, that's something I'm really attached to. A lot of our favorite kind of Disney artists, ones who do stuff for their merchandise, actually show things there. Things like Macbiff and um, Gerard, Gerard uh, Mariama. A good friend of ours um, was really kind enough to go and collect this year's complete set of pins. So we've got the whole set of Festival of the Arts, or as Ordinary Adventures like to call it, Farts. Um, I don't think see Disney doing that as a merchandising option. But yeah, you've got Figment, Mickey, and Donald on various kind of arts-based pins. There's a theme every year, and usually it revolves around Figment in some shape or form. But no, they came um, a couple of months back, didn't they? Uh, came through the post really quickly, and I'm really grateful um, to the gentleman that got them for us. Um, speaking of arts, uh, one of our kind of favorite designs that we've seen in recent years, um, and we've seen it used on lots of merchandise. We don't know who it is who makes them, or if, I'm sure it's a team that makes them, um, but uh, Disneyland reopening, they've just released a new bunch of merchandise, and it's got pretty much the same graphics as a lot of this, which is a 1000 piece puzzle, and it's got or this is Disney World in particular rather than Disneyland. I think they did one for Disneyland as well, uh, which is more specific. But yeah, I really love the graphics on this. I would have just probably got this as a print, but nice thing is it actually builds into the shape of the Mickey silhouette. Are you gonna make it? Yeah, I mean, I've, well, yeah, <laughs> like a lot of things in lockdown. <laughs> It's one of the things where it's, it's almost like, but the table I usually use to put things like this on would has been rather crowded with merch. Other rubbish, yes. <laughs> Other rubbish. Now the thing I'm really, 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 really excited for is what's in this box. Some of you may know that there's a uh, Disney membership club. You can apply for free, but it's just like a bare minimum, you know, like you just get news and that's pretty much it. Um, or you can pay extra money to join the club. It's called D23 and this, is from them. So this is this year's uh, package for members, like gold members. Uh, so they send out a, a pack every year with lots of new merch in it and things to celebrate certain you know, occasions. Obviously this year it's the 50th, um, cel celebrating the 50th year of Walt Disney World Resort. So they're going with that as a theme. I haven't joined D23 because friends of ours in Canada also joined and it, they told me how much it costs to get it all shipped and dispatch to them and then you've got to take into account the magazines they send which they also charge postage for and considering we're only going once this year to Walt Disney World and it's later on in the year possibly hopefully um, I'm not going to get much benefit out of joining the club so luckily I went on eBay and someone was selling it in the UK um, so I got this for 40 quid What's up? so this is where your membership certificate would go and then you get a sort of oldie timey sort of news, but actually from what I know, it's, I haven't even read this, this is the first time I've actually opened it. Um, I think it's basically like the history and sort of big moments in Walt Disney World's history. Um, and then this is kind of exciting. So they use little Mickeys to hold things in place, quite nicely designed. So we've got a vinyl record and this is, I think this is a coloured vinyl, I think it's red, which I collect vinyl, I've got like a... What's on it? So it's got um, Bear Band Serenade from the Country Bear Jamboree, which we know quite well and we really enjoy Country Bear Jamboree. 
and nothing could stop us now which is from the uh, Runaway Railway, the Mickey and Minnie Runaway Railway, the new one, which is now played everywhere. Nothing can stop us now. Da, 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 um, and then you've got Orange Bird, nice graphic there. I'll probably keep this box because it's really nice to put together. This is the main thing I got it for. Oh, oh, oh. There we go. And this is also, um, Mate, your school lunch? My school lunch, yeah. I'm not going away to have lunch. But it's an old school tin lunch box, which is designed by Annie, uh, no, um, the guys who did the Up statues we've got and the Mary Poppins. <laughs> yeah, so it's got, again, um, all the favourites and then a really kind of like retro old school Mickey and Donald. I think it's got Chippendale somewhere on there. Yeah, Chippendale. And then round the sides. Is that way around? Is that way around? Round the sides. Again, some really nice illustrations. I actually might use this to keep uh, pins in. And not only that, but inside... is a lunch from 1956. <laughs> <laughs> it's a stale old Spam sandwich from 1956. Um, You've got pins, which are of all the icons, again, different characters. And it just so happens, a lot of these are my favorite kind of characters. You've got- Fancy that. Just happen to be your favorites. Got country. And then this, which is kind of really old school. One of my friends from school used to go to Disney World all the time. I never got to go. Oh, you poor thing. I know. Um, I had to wait until I was 40. Um, and he used to always bring back sports memorabilia, like so merchandise he'd been to games and things. And the, these were kind of like a big thing. I, I still don't get. I used to see him on '80s movies on kids' walls. Um, what are they called? Is it pennant? Yeah, pennant flags. And in this case, it's like a real retro sort of colouring with Mickey from sort of like 1970s, and then D23 in his ear. Yeah, I really like that. I'm not going to put it anywhere, but <laughs> thank God could wear it. Have I got anything else? Of course you have. <laughs> it's a big week. Uh, another thing we've got, um, as somebody who may have watched the channel before, uh, we do have quite a few sort of coffee table books and I collect ones which are about Disneyland, Disney World, history of Disney, animation, etc. Um, and in that vein, I invested in a couple of books which I've seen really good reviews of. First one is the official Haunted Mansion book, which originally I thought seeing this, I never I never noticed the Imagineering parts on the front. Um, I thought it was a book of just, you know, kind of the story of Haunted Mansion as in the story itself of when you're on the ride. But no, it's actually a history and um, goes into huge depth about the design of Haunted Mansion, not just at Disney World, but also Disneyland, the original one. And then you've got Tokyo Disney, basically anywhere where there's a Haunted Mansion, including Paris. And, and as for anybody who's been to diff more than one or two of them, there's a huge difference. And this tells you more about it. And yeah, I thought that was quite nice. It's got nice sort of like illustrations throughout. And then kind of keeping on the history of design and Imagineering, um, a Twitter uh, follower bought this and I thought that'd be quite interesting because I don't know much about the monorail. And it's got a history of the monorail from its conception to present day, um, whether it be design, technology, and it goes about, about the res resorts. It touches, posters, um, how Walt was involved in creating it and where the ideas came from, what he wanted to use it for, um, and where he saw it going in the future. Um, so yeah, it's really nice and it shows like the changes of the monorail throughout the years. And I can't wait to get back on the monorail. We didn't use it much last time, did we? No. So yeah, that's a really nice book. Um, and I thought, I think it was on Amazon for about 15 quid. Right. I got it on offer. So that's it. Um, I had a trip to Disney Store this week. Um, where Just the one? Actually, twice. Something came out that I'd completely forgotten about. Um, which you're going to love because it's Funko and it's Disney. <laughs> uh, for anybody who was a kid in the 80s, 
I think they'll remember this show and also remember the very distinctive um, theme tune, much like DuckTales and uh, what other film? Uh, oh, Chip and Dale's Rescue Rangers. They're songs that stick with you and this bunch had the most addictive one for me, which was Gummy Bears. Gummy Bears bouncing here and there and everywhere. So we've got a whole fam. Whole fan of gummy bears. So is that uh, zummy gummy? Yeah, zummy gummy. We've got sunny gummy. We've got tummy gummy because he's a large bear. Of course, gruffy bunny. No, gruffy bear rather, not bunny. Bunny. <laughs> bunny. <laughs> They're not rabbits. Um, yeah, so we've got Gruffy, who is kind of like the grumpy of the lot. And then the kid, who is Cubby. Um, yeah, so uh, they are all in Disney stores. I was really pleased. Um, I'd seen them in another shop and I thought, no, no. And then the lovely cast member in the Disney store went, you must get them, you must. And uh, yeah, dashing and daring, courageous and caring. Just like you, my darling. <laughs> Just like, excitable. That's it. One last thing, one last thing. Um, so the last thing is we have a lot of board games and some could say we're connoisseurs of board games even though we haven't really played very many for a long, long time. Um, like over a year? Over a year, uh, when you think you'd have most, most time to play board games. Um, we've got a huge collection of Monopoly, haven't we? So we've got like um, about three versions of Star Wars Monopoly. I think Including the 3D one. Stranger Things, Monopoly. This one is, it's the Disney Parks um, theme park edition of Monopoly. And there's a couple of different versions of this out, but this one I found quite attractive because on the back you'll see, it's got an actual sort of 3D aspect to it. So it's like a physical thing in front of you, maybe 4D. Um, and you've actually got the castle in the middle of it. So with this, you've got, uh, so the, I think it's the Walt Disney World castle, Cinderella's castle and moat. And then you have the statue, the partner statue as a gold centerpiece. I don't know if that's a playing piece. Um, oh, that's a collector's token. Includes 60 minute speed play, because sometimes let's face it, it's a long, long game. Monopoly can go on for a long time. Um, six brand new tokens. And then you've got magic and fantasy cards, replace chance and community chest. So we'll probably have a go at that later, I think, if we get a chance. Sure. At some point over the weekend or the next bank holiday. Uh, but yeah, so I'm really pleased with that. It took a while to get here, but it got here eventually. And it's so what nice. you brought that from, you, you imported that from the United States? Yeah. So that was shipped in. Um, but it was on sale, so I kind of got it for the same price I would have paid if I was over there just waiting it out. Best thing to do, wait it out and wait for a deal. And I managed to get one, which means it ended up costing the same as if I'd spent it over there and less of the hassle of getting it back from America. <laughs> and in your suitcase. Let us know what things you collect from Walt Disney World, if you've been getting anything shipped in um, to sort of ease the pain of not getting to go to Disney World physically. So don't forget, if you haven't watched the previous episode, which is the anniversary episode, we do have a competition running. Yeah, so it's really easy to enter and it's literally a case of just keep your eye out for the Grogu's. <gasps> Did I say too much? <laughs> you always say too much. <laughs> um, but yeah, thanks That's for watching. That's why I have to do so much editing. <laughs> wow. So thanks for watching. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe. It's really important to us because um, it helps more people discover our content. And thanks for all those new people who've joined us in the last week. We hope you stick around because we're going to be getting out and about even more. So you can follow us at Twitter on Robbo and Gent and Instagram at Aussie Robbo and the English Gent. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time. Bye. Bye. Intro, intro, ha la la, intro, intro, flying. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs>